Here are some properties and applications of the normal distribution. You might have noticed that the support of the normal distribution runs from negative infinity to positive infinity, which is to say a normal random variable can take on any real value. However, on the first slide in this section, it was, it was given that cholesterol levels of 50-year-old men and heights of adult women and weights of newborn babies and crop yields and diameters of ball bearings, those were indicated that they might have bell-shaped distributions, but every single one of those have supports which are inherently positive. That is, their support goes from zero to infinity rather than negative infinity to infinity. So this brings up a quotation which is from George Box, one of the pioneers in statistics, was a professor for many years at the University of Wisconsin, and he said all models are wrong, that is the probability model using the normal distribution for any of these possible applications is not exactly right because the support isn't exactly right. However, some of these models are close enough to being right to be useful. There are several applications of the normal distribution in what is known as classical statistics and in classical statistics you assume that you are sampling observations independently from a normal population. Those values sampled might be cholesterol levels of 50 year old men and so you take one cholesterol level from a 50 year old man and then another and then another and you get n different values and that leads to what is known as classical statistics. This also shows up in something called quality control. Within quality control there is something known as a control chart. A control chart was invented in 1923 by Walter Schuhart and then after World War II, Deming and Duran took these control charts over to J Japan and in fact there is an award, a quality control award in Japan with Deming's name on it that is a highly uh, prized award to win. The shorthand as indicated on the previous page for a normal random variable is the following. X is distributed as a normal random variable with population mean mu and population variance sigma squared. Now notice when you are using R and when you are using Apple in both of those languages the parameter mu will go in just like it does here but the second parameter will not go in as sigma squared it will go in as sigma. So you always have to be very careful the shorthand writes this as the population variance but many languages, including R and Apple, will use sigma rather than sigma squared for the second parameter of the normal distribution. Since f of x is symmetric, the population mean, median, and mode all equal mu. So there is not much room here. But here is a bell-shaped distribution, a normal distribution centered around mu. Mu will be the balance point, that is the population mean. Mu also happens to be the median, that is the area to the left of mu is one half and the area to the right of mu is one half. And in addition if you want the peak value, that is the population mode of the distribution, which is the x value here, remember this is x, and we are drawing f of x, the um, x value which is associated with the largest value of the probability density function, that is also mu. So this is one of the few distributions where the mean, median, and mode are all the same. The probability density function of the normal distribution has inflection points at mu plus or minus sigma. So if this is mu plus sigma, and same distance over here you put in mu minus sigma at those particular points on the distribution there will be an inflection point which is to say the probability density function out here 
is concave up. In between mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma, it is concave down. And then to the right of mu plus sigma, it is concave up again. There is a famous special case of the normal distribution. It is called the standard normal distribution. And usually we use x for random variables, but tradition indicates that the, uh, the letter z, uppercase z, is used for the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and population variance 1, which means its standard deviation is also 1. And this distribution arises because in statistical tables and in languages like R and Apple, it is easier to work with the standard normal than it is the general normal. And the, this is the reason that's the case. The cumulative distribution of function of x, which is a normal random variable, looks like this. And sadly, unlike the exponential distribution and the uniform distribution, this CDF is not closed form. It's the integral from minus infinity to x of f of w dw, and this cannot be integrated in closed form. It must be integrated numerically, and that's too bad, but that leads to, um, in r, for example, you can use the function p norm to calculate this quantity, and in Apple, you can use the CDF function to calculate this particular CDF. Now on the next page is the, uh, the last three bullet points here. Some authors tend to use this capital Phi of X rather than F of X for the standard normal CDF. That's not something we're going to use here, but I just want to point that out so that you are aware of it. Next, there is something that's known as the 689599.7 rule. And what this rule does is it says that if you look at the area within one sigma of the mean, you will get an area of 0.68. If you look at the area underneath a standard normal PDF within two sigma values, that is start at mu minus two sigma and go out to mu plus two sigma, you get approximately 95% of the area. And if you go plus or minus three sigma, that is if you take the area underneath the cumulative, or I'm sorry, underneath the probability density function between mu minus three sigma and mu plus three sigma, you will get about 99.7% um, of the area. Here is that rule applied to a standard normal, that is normal zero one, random variable and I have drawn its probability density function here so notice it is centered around zero that is the population mean population median and population mode are all equal to zero and if you look at the area underneath the curve between negative one and positive one that is within one sigma you will get 0.68 for that shaded area if you look between negative two and positive two you will get 0.95 and if you look between negative 3 and positive 3 you'll get almost all of the area which is 0.997. Finally the last bullet the normal distribution is the limit of a binomial random variable as n goes to infinity. You may remember when the binomial distribution was introduced and we looked at, at its shape I believe associated with n equals 60 it looked fairly bell-shaped. So this leads to something which is known as the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. But it's not only the binomial that has a property like this. If you take the gamma distribution as the parameter kappa goes to infinity, that will also approach a normal distribution. The same is true of the Poisson distribution. If you let its parameter lambda go to infinity, it will look bell-shaped. And finally, if you look at the negative 
binomial distribution and you look at it as its parameter r goes to infinity, it will also approach the normal distribution.